Hello and welcome to How to Write a Short Film with me, Anthony Het, the Film Coach. Today's video is a roundtable discussion with a small group of wonderful writers. Hi, my name is Mariama. I'm a scriptwriter. I've had a few play plays performed and I'm trying to branch out into radio and television as well. Uh, my name's David York. I'm a writer-director. Um, I've got a couple of films that are just finishing their festival run. I'm working to my next short and hopefully my first feature. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Stelios. I have some uh, shorts made already. The last one uh, did very well in festivals. Uh, now for now I'm uh, preparing the next shorts. Uh, my uh, last script uh, just got some uh, funding money from uh, the Greek Film Center. So hopefully this is what we are making next. Hi, I'm Kristen. I'm a writer, director. I've made um, two short films so far. Um, I've just managed to raise some money for my next one, which we're hoping to shoot in May. Hi, my name is Rishi. I've, uh, I'm a writer stroke one-time director. I've written three short films and I'm working on a couple of um, pilots at the moment. Awesome. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you for agreeing to do this. It's really great to see you all. Um, we're just going to kick off with kind of just jump in anybody when you want to kind of what made you want to write scripts. So I know for myself, um, I really wanted to direct when I was young and I kind of was like, oh, well, what am I going to direct? So I decided I was going to kind of write a script and, and that's where I kind of fell into it. What, what's everybody else's experience? What, what made you kind of want to write scripts? Um, for me, my mum always used to take us to the theatre. So I just fell in love with that. And then I used to write poems as well. And then it just graduated to like then writing my own script. I think for for me it was yeah it's just come from a, a love of watching films and um, and uh, TV and and I used to create little um, projects on my camera when I was little and I think as I got older I started to um, have more control and I started to create characters and then you know having like a plot so it stemmed from just creating anything to then sort of getting a bit more control and then sort of become more narrative led? Uh, for me, it was the idea of storytelling. So I always loved the uh, storytelling. Uh, st started, uh, started from uh, uh, studying uh, ancient myths and ancient Greek drama. And uh, I was, uh, as a kid, I was making comics. So uh, film was a natural next step. Uh, so it was this holistic idea of uh, making a story from start to finish. So I uh, started with an idea, then the script, then the film. I think it's quite cool so far that, it, you know, it's been slightly different kind of process for everybody kind of so far. Kristen, what, what was your, why did you kind of start writing was there? Um, similar to David, actually, I, I have made sort of rubbishy films since I was about seven or eight. Um, and when I got to when I got older, I realized that the films I really love, I, I can kind of try and do that kind of thing as well through like when I have access to good actors and stuff like that, I can just write things and bring it to life, um, which I find found kind of cool. So yeah, I guess it's just bringing, bring, being able to bring things to life is is quite fun and, and make the kind of films that you love as well. Oh, yeah, I think for me, um, I, was, I always had like an overactive imagination. And when I was at school, I used to write stories all the time. And um, on Saturdays, there used to be this show where it used to go behind the scenes of the films where you'd watch like the behind the scenes of stunts and so forth. And I was just really fascinated by that. And then I used to subscribe to, I think either Neon Magazine or Total Film, I can't remember which one, and had the screenplay of Pulp Fiction. And I read that and it just blew my mind. And I was like, oh my God, you can actually write film scripts for a living. And I think from, that, from then on, I just wanted to write all the time. 
what kind of age were you then when you kind of read that like a teenager kind of yeah it was I was about 14 years old I think it was um I think that's when Pulp Fiction came out um and we had this really cool media teacher at school um called Mr Gibbons and he just used to love like talking about Tarantino and usual suspects and all that stuff and I think from him I just like got the got the got the bug of like filmmaking and stuff like that so yeah cool so everybody kind of started writing I guess when they were quite young so did most people kind of like Rishi did you write stories when you were young and, and all that kind of thing was that part of of what got you yeah yeah so it was um so when I was at school um so this is before secondary school so before I was like what like 10 11 like I used to watch Columbo with my dad every like Saturday morning and when I was at school I wrote this uh, short story called A Hundred Ways to Kill Your Wife and I was, <laughs> I was borrowing like storylines from Columbo and then I handed it into the teacher and then I think the next week the teacher wanted to speak to my parents because I was like <laughs> this is like disturbing content like what's going on <laughs> so um, yeah I was just I, I mean I just always used to love writing short stories when I was when I was at school and stuff like that is anybody else the same? Did you write little stories or was it little scripts? What were you kind of doing when you were kids? I would always write um, poems when it was someone's birthday. Um, it, was, it used to be quite basic, just like rhyme and stuff, and then to branch out a little bit and make it personal to them. But then um, it was more so when there was DCSEs and we had to like um, create our own play. And then I really was like, oh my gosh, like we can create our own story we don't have to just do something that's been done years and years ago so I really loved that process and I was like oh originally I was kind of leaning towards acting more but then once we had the freedom to create our own scripts I was like oh actually maybe this is the part that I enjoy more mm. but it's interesting because I feel like at school you're not really taught aside from like obviously in English you do prose no one really says oh you can be a script writer <laughs> so it was more like I love writing stories doing a bit of poetry and I love acting but at no point they want to say, oh, script writing is an option. So it was like finding that out myself. And I feel like it would have been really good in school if there was someone who would have said like, oh, you can do this part as well. It doesn't just have to be either acting or writing books. So Yeah, yeah. I, think that's, I think that's awesome, man. I think you're completely right. And I think that when I was in school, I went to, we had, there was like, we had one visit with a, like a careers advisor, I guess. And I sat down and they were like, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, I'm quite good at maths and physics. My dad's an engineer and that's what I'm kind of thinking about doing at uni. But actually I, I started writing and I love films and I, I kind of want to do that. Like, how do I become a scriptwriter? How do I become a filmmaker? And they were just like, oh, um, there's no kind of real proper path. Like clearly didn't have an answer. We're just like, um, <laughs> well, just kind of what you do is you write scripts and like keep it as a hobby and then it might become your job. And then like 20 years later, that's still what I'm doing. Like, you know, I know Marianne because we're swimming teachers together and it's like, so I'm like swimming teacher while writing and trying to make my own films and stuff. And I feel that like, you know, there are other kind of pathways, but I didn't necessarily know what they were. And I certainly didn't get that help from school. How was everybody else? What was your experience of school? Were you encouraged or, or not so much? No, I wasn't. Sorry, Rishi. I no, I had a careers advisor as well, and I said I wanted to be a film writer, director, and and she just like she just brushed it off immediately. She didn't even give it any time of day. Um, and yeah, I've had a lot of people say, yeah, it's a nice hobby and stuff like that. And now I'm like I quit my job in December, and I'm doing this kind of full time for however long I can last at it. So. Yeah, I would say just just go for it. Like no one's ever going to think it's the right career, but you, you have to give it a go, don't you? Yeah, yeah I mean, at, this is like what, 20 years ago and media studies was one of the first new subjects that were introduced as a GCSE. And I remember telling my math teacher that I wanted to be work in media. And he, he just his first response to me was, oh, I'll see you down the job centre then. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally... Um, so um yeah like that's like that's what it was like for me like uh, but it, that pushed me on I was like no I want to you know be a writer and I want to um, like work in films and tv shows and stuff like that so yeah cool 
Um, so let's let's move on slightly with the conversation. So that's kind of what inspired us to start writing. Um, anybody kind of jump in? What what inspires your ideas? So your ideas for your films. Um, is there something in particular that kind of helps you to, to come up with ideas or is there a certain time or place when you, you get ideas or they based on real life? What, what's everybody's kind of inspiration? Uh, for me, it's usually, it's usually a real life event. It might happen to me or a friend or someone unknown. Uh, I may read it on the news or I may, someone may narrate it to me or may have experienced it. But it needs to be something very bold uh, that stays with me for one or two days. And then I think, oh, that is worth exploring. Mm -hmm. So it starts from one main event, let's say. Uh, and then obviously it develops. And uh, um, once I start outlining, it may be worth exploring more or not. Um, I think for me, it's it's a combination really because I've written quite um, quite a few scripts and the, they can be quite different. Some are very personal and like Stelios, if it's something that's um, happened to me or someone that I know and um, I really connect with it. But then it could be like other things where if I see an image or if I'm entering a competition and there's a beef and it kind of gives you like... Um, sort of starting off point and it sparks an idea sometimes it'll be like oh if i go running or if i'm speaking to someone and it literally just sparks this idea and um it can be random or forced it, it's very weird when you just suddenly get this um an idea that sort of comes out of nowhere but i just try and roll with it and then if it um, becomes something and i, I like want to tell it then i keep going with it I would say my process is similar to um, both of you, but also if an idea randomly comes to me and I just start like writing it and it might even be that I start with a character and then literally something branches off that I hadn't even thought of originally, but it's purely happened because I've started writing as this character. So I find that through the characters, the story would then become a world. Yeah. Yeah. I think the same for me as well. It's just sometimes just, you read a story or you just get an idea when you're going for a run or something like that and it just it, it has to like you have to still keep thinking about it afterwards and you think yeah this could make this thing because like my folder on my laptop is like literally a hundred scripts of just unfinished stuff it's like a graveyard of just things that i just never done um but yeah like the, the imagination the inspiration comes and you just gotta like just go with it really yeah, I, I have exactly the same. I have loads of folders and things of random ideas. I think I, my inspiration comes from just real life and the, the moments that I like or the, the moments that I see in other films as well that I kind of want to replicate. Um, but yeah, I, my scripts are kind of like cheesy and stuff. So I quite like the, the cheesier moments of like, human life yeah so i try and pay attention when i'm having conversations with people and stuff like that just coming back to that point that you've just both made there kind of having like a, a folder of kind of dead ideas kind of thing um I, does anybody have any thoughts on kind of what what ideas make it and why like you you might have five or ten different ideas and you might start developing some how do you know which one to develop or which one to work on? How do you know which one is the, the idea? Has anybody got any thoughts on, on that? I think some it's, it's a way of like figuring out which one is a short story or which one's just a sketch and which one can be either a 30 minute TV show or a 60 minute thing or a feature. Thing. It's, it's, it's one of those things where um, like the idea can come and then you think to yourself, oh, what, what's the best way of showing this idea like is it is it just like a, a comedy sketch show or something like, like it just all depends really i think it's also different as well if um if you if you're just solely a writer i, I can't imagine it might be a difficult question to answer as i guess whatever it sells but as being a writer director for me it's like, like um the one that i just connect with the most and the one that i want to tell but 
I think you mentioned something like which, um, how do you know which one's going to be a success or something like that? I think timing is always important as well because like obviously the world's changing so much and something that you've written could like resonate and then suddenly it doesn't like um, the next year. And um, this that I've written, I, I, I started my first feature like 15 years ago and every now and again I sort of, dip in and out and the, the story has stayed the same but i've had to like modernize it and i think i only can answer just as a right director it's just the ones you really want to tell but i guess as a writer i guess which gets the most traction and that you could sell i guess um i'll say for myself it's the script that i can't like the idea i'm thinking about um that i'm just like oh no I'm just trying to find different ways for it to work. I had a script that I originally wrote as a play and then it wasn't really taking off. And then I was like, actually, maybe this is better as radio. And now it's hopefully going to happen. So sometimes it's finding the right medium for the idea. But also um, when you have an idea and then you can say it in like literally a few sentences and people are like, oh, but if you say it to people and it's like, mm, you're just like, oh yeah, I don't think it's gonna work. And also if you can't make it into a paragraph, if it's too complicated and too much happening, then you realize that, okay, maybe this is four ideas and I'm trying to make it into one. So sometimes it is literally just the simplest story it can be the most powerful because then you can just really dig deep into the characters and everything that's happening within it, so. Just following on from that, um, so what you said there about kind of like putting it into a paragraph, putting it into a few sentences, um, I think that that's really important, like part of the process and also really grueling and, you know, just really frustrating. I find it really hard to kind of do that sometimes. And um, what, what do people, do people have like a certain process? So do you outline your idea before you go to script? Um, I know Mariam, you mentioned kind of, you might just start with the character and work it out. But does anybody have like a certain process of this is how I, I normally write? Um, personally, I uh, I am a fan of uh, of very very extensive outlining. So I will start with a paragraph or two, then I would move to uh, making this a page or two pages where you have your full story. And once you have your full story, then I will start uh, putting it into a script writing software and start uh, writing scenes and uh, dialogues. And then once you have a first draft, obviously you will start changing things on the draft and making 10 or 20 or 30 drafts. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, the, the last film that we just got uh, funded, it's a process of basically two years, two years for a short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a long time. How about anybody yeah. else? Is it similar or different? Yeah, I, I, for me, that the, the ones that I've completed are the ones that I've outlined, like ones where I've just sat down in front of the computer and just started typing away, thinking it's a great idea. Those ones are the ones that are in the graveyard of um, the ones where I like the feature film and the this pilots that I've completed. I've done a lot of character work, a lot of outlining and making sure that, oh, so whenever I'm lost as I'm typing out a scene, I can go back to it and go, oh yeah, this is what's supposed to happen by the end of this scene, or this is where this character is going. So yeah, I think outlining is my like new thing. I'm going to start outlining everything that I do. It's funny because I actually think I'm, I'm a complete opposite. Um, and I actually did do like an MA in creative writing and they just hammered in like structure and outline and all that stuff. And I actually found that so much harder than writing the script. And like all my scripts that have been successful, I've literally just had the idea, like written it out in prose. So literally just on my phone, on notes, just like, this is what could happen, et cetera, et cetera. And then just written the script. And then I will go back and check the structure and make sure like, I've got the inciting incident, I've got this and this, make sure the character's journey is fulfilled. Um, but yeah, I do the outline after I've written the script because I find that when I've written the prose of what's going to happen, once I start writing it, it changes anyway. So if I do the structure and I write the script, they end up being two completely different documents. So I do the script and then I go to the outline and structure and stuff. I think that's how Stephen King writes. So you're in good company. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, 
I'm pretty much like Stelios and um but I go I go even more detailed so after I've done sort of like my outline like you know paragraph page two pages I sort of then break it down before I go on to final draft where I sort of um every scene what happens in each scene and then I almost are you, are, like, you, are you doing a step outline then yeah 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 so I'll do the outline then yeah I guess like a step outline and then and then I will bring each scene into the draft and I kind of treat them like as if they're their own, their own like mini shorts. And then I do this thing where it's like creating like a body almost where you get like your skeleton, your organs, and then your skin and your detail. That's how I sort of, and then I keep going, going back to it and keep adding extra little touches, like, like pay off, you know, if you, if you do something at the beginning that, you know, you acknowledge it later on and just trying to flesh out more and more. What's the difference between an outline and then a step outline? So is an outline like every single scene or? That's, yeah, that's, um, that's what it is for me. I think everyone's got their own mm. thing to remember is, and which is great is, obviously there's, I guess, the professional way of doing it, but we all have our different processes and what works for us. And I don't see myself changing from the way I do it now just because it really works for me. And I love having this sort of, 10 page document like like scene one all the way up to like scene a hundred and something and I just know I love that I can just refer back to it every time I'm like in my final draft part of the writing and I can just jump back and it's works for me. I think that like it's really good to hear and listen because I think you're right that that people are all completely different you just got to do what works for you like if we're giving advice to kind of new writers it's you can tell them to kind of outline and do all this, but you don't know what's going to work for them. So I think it's really important for me. I kind of, I try to be really kind of organized and do it kind of like the way that David saying it and do kind of like write it up like Stelius and then go into a step outline and stuff like that. But it, yeah, it, I find that in some ways is really helpful, but some ways I find that a really difficult process. So the actual writing the script is great after you've done all that hard work because then you know you've basically got the script and you're just adding in the dialogue and it's all all structured and sorted but I find that I find making decisions I think probably in life just in general quite difficult so I find that process of like really organizing it really difficult because then I'm kind of like oh yeah but this could happen or that could happen and then I, I struggle for days and I don't know what's going to happen um, so it's kind of a bit of a combination for me. Sometimes I have to then just start writing because I, that I that that decision might get made. Otherwise, I'm just going to sit down and not make it. Um, but the reason I'm kind of saying that is just because there's, there's things that we like and there's things that we don't like maybe about the writing process. So has anybody got any thoughts on, um, is there anything that you find particularly difficult or particularly easy? That I love writing dialogue. I like developing characters. Anybody got any thoughts on, the good and bad of it, kind of. Um, I love writing dialogue. Um, that's that's definitely my favourite part. And the part that I find the hardest is definitely writing the pitch, to try and put your whole idea into one page because you've got all these ideas running through your head and how the series could progress and then you've got to suddenly make it in this amazing one page document that just stands out. And when I've read like amazing ones, I'm like, how did you how did you do this? And I realised it is an art form in itself. Like and I'm gradually getting better, but you just have to work at it. And I find it harder to do a one page pitch than to write a 30 page pitch. So I just think everyone's got their strengths and it's definitely something that I have to work a lot harder at, whereas I feel like the dialogue came more naturally to me. I think log lines for me is the worst. I hate writing log lines. I think just the other day I had to run for a competition and I the amount of different drafts that I sent to my mate to like, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? And it's just trying to distill your entire idea into like a sentence is just the worst thing ever. Um, I think what I, because I enjoy writing action and sci-fi and horror, like, I just enjoy writing suspense description. So when it's when it comes to like the horror stuff and it's you know like door creaks and you know you hear a wind rustling or whatever like I enjoy that that makes me type really fast because I enjoy that um, style of writing like just doing all that horror stuff. 
Yeah, I think that with the kind of the outline in, uh, sorry, with the, the log lines and the describing your day, I think it's really hard. I think one thing I would say is that, you know, obviously the importance of kind of people to be able to read your script, to be able to read your one pages and stuff like that, it's like, it's really helpful. Um, and I find that if you can work with like a producer or someone's a bit got more of a producery head, sometimes they're quite good. They're not necessarily good at writing the one page, but they might be good at picking out what you should sell about it. I think I find that kind of hard sometimes if it's like, well, this is the story, but what should I actually be selling um, about the story? Has anybody got any other thoughts about things that they, they like or don't like about script writing? Uh, I think I think uh, what I particularly like is uh, when the, the characters develop a image of their own uh, and they start and, and, the, and the words uh, just come out so naturally uh, when and you're not overthinking or following your blueprint so closely, but you're uh, but 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 then at the same time it feels real. Uh, so I think at this point is where I am very very happy with writing. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, cool. Let's move on. Um, the next thing I kind of wanted to to talk about and ask people about, and Kristen, maybe we can start with you because you said that you kind of write kind of cheesy stuff. So it'd be interesting to know a little bit more about, about that and what you mean by that. But do people have like common themes in their kind of work? Like obviously, um, yeah, Kristen, what, what is there a common theme that kind of goes through your work? Um, yeah, I said out kind of cheesy stuff. I mean, someone said to me recently that a theme of mine is um, kind of hope. So I, I kind of um, try to tackle kind of um, the themes, um, but then have that sort of the lasting feeling of hope um, by the end. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like similar to what Stelios was saying about like characters having their own voice and stuff. I love it when um, characters are kind of unapologetically themselves and stuff and like human, as I mentioned before. Um, so yeah, I, I'm still kind of learning my themes, but I say kind of human connection and hope and stuff like that is kind of what I'm, I seem to steer towards at the moment anyway. David, I know that obviously I know your work quite well and you've got some common themes. You said you've written some scripts that are kind of based on your life, but then you've got some things that are completely um, different. Do you feel like though that even though you've got, you know, horror and, and, and comedy and drama and different um, genres, do you feel that there's still kind of things that are common threads through your films? Yeah, as I'm getting older and as I'm doing more and I've sort of found, um you know what I enjoy I, I have been finding that like I, I find that I do tend to do more character driven stories you know about dysfunctionality about people that are lost and trying to um, fix themselves and I, I yeah as I get older I start to look at you know the people around me and the experiences I've had and I sort of focus on that and whatever genre it sort of falls in it, it it just it becomes that I kind of get a little bit frustrated that um you know as a director you're just meant to do one type of thing like and you kind of get put in a box whereas you know I've done horror sci-fi's and then I'll have something that's very um character driven and not, simplistic's the wrong word but not a lot happens it could just follow two people over a day trying to um you know um trying to grow and then so like I think for me it's just whatever I I know I've said it a few times but whatever I connect to and if I'm enjoying writing it and I want to tell it that's what I sort of go with I have found though even though I love like watching comedies and like big action spectacles and stuff I don't have the, the desire to work with those type of stories which I'm kind of loving so longer it's like I'll just write any story and I'm finding as I'm getting older that I know exactly the sort of stories I want to tell and I think it's an age ring as well as you get older there's only so many stories you can tell so just picking the ones that resonate with you the most. I think for me the main thing is um, 
my protagonist is always a woman and always a woman of color to be fair um and then the stories i love like like horrors thrillers comedies grounded sci-fis fantasy so there's always like a strange element to my scripts if it is grounded in reality um but i do um yeah i do love it to be a little bit weird in a way <laughs> cool um <laughs> I'm looking forward to to seeing everything that's going to come out um, and see what you mean by weird. We'll kind of see what. That... <laughs> um, so for all of you guys, um, what would you see as a success? What's it success for you? Because obviously success is kind of different for everybody. Um, and, you know, that could be obviously like an Oscar or it could be just kind of having a broadcast credit or kind of what that is. But kind of in terms of, especially on the kind of writing side of it, um, do you, you know, I, I think it is important to kind of have like ambitions and goals and like to be set in things, kind of might be a good idea to be realistic within that, but how does everyone really feel of you? What, what is success to you as a writer? I think for me, success is um, having one of my scripts actually, like getting funded, and getting it made and you know we don't know what the whole um covid is going to be with cinemas and stuff but still hoping to you know getting grip made into a film that's screened and um you know i'm not in for me i'm not in it for the money but it would be really nice to actually get paid to do it because at the moment you know i've got like my sort of side job while doing my shorts and um I think just get it seen by as many people as possible. Um, but it keeps changing every year. I remember the days when getting my film in blockbusters was success, but that's no longer there. So I guess it's now getting it on like a streaming platform. But that seems quite easy now. I know so many people that have their shorts on Amazon Prime. So it's it's a tricky question because it's the lines are sort of blurred. It's like, is that a success now, getting your a short film on prime um it's a bit of a weird one and a bigger discussion i guess but um i think ultimately just connecting with people being seen on the big screen and just doing well on like reviews are quite nice like getting good reviews and winning awards because it it's it's a nice symbol token of um all your hard work and it shows that people liked it so yeah I don't know if that's answered it but... I think David covered almost everything he <laughs> <laughs> told the boxes uh, but I think because scripts are 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 written to be made so they are not just they don't exist uh, usually they don't exist as a pure uh, written form of literature like a book or a poem uh, I think the ultimate success of a script is into being made into into a film, basically. Uh, so I think that uh, that could be a very short film, like in one or two minutes short or something longer. Uh, but I think if it ma if if the script gets uh, made, it's a first step of uh, of success. And then obviously, uh, I. I agree that since script writing uh, is a full-time job, uh, and, or uh, it 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 should be uh, it should be paid like that. So at some point, uh, if you consider yourself a professional, uh, you you should be able to make a living out of that. Not maybe not become rich, but uh, if you are putting so much time and effort as you would do in every other job, uh, you should be getting paid accordingly. Yeah, I think um, for me, um, like I said, like goals always change. Like ten years ago, like you know, working in Hollywood and you know something like that. But I think for me at the moment, like to get myself into a writer's room and working on a TV show is a goal that I'm actively trying to go for. So the the scripts that I'm writing at the moment, you know, I, I'm not, I'm using those as like a calling card because um, they're high concept, 
you know, sometimes a little bit grounded, but still very high concept sci-fi um, horror stuff, which I know in my in my mind, I know it's not going to get made, but maybe able to open some doors and if I show it to a couple of producers and they like it. So that's what I'm. That's my goal at the moment is to kind of get into a, a writer's room and make writing my permanent job. Like right now, I've got my it's my nine to five job, and writing is a hobby at the moment. Well, I do it work, but doing it full time is is my is my goal. Yeah, I would agree with everything that everyone said. Um, definitely been able to say I'm a full time writer. Like that is my career. Um, maybe do a little bit of teaching swimming on the side <laughs> um, but I think um, yeah having one of my plays performed in one of the more renowned theatres like I don't know like National Theatre um, be amazing and then having like a show produced like on TV would definitely be amazing but I think yeah it's interesting how everyone said about before when you were younger you would think like really really and then as you get older you get more realistic but also it's good just to remain hopeful because there are so many competitions out there that can literally transform your life still potentially. So, and then you hear about so many people breaking into industry so much later. So the good thing about writing is you can do it at whatever age, as long as you've still got the ideas coming, it's not limited. So that's why I feel like it has so much potential. Okay, just before we wrap this up then, um, so thanks again for doing this. It's been really great to, to talk to you all. Um, just one last thing, if everybody could just give kind of one piece of advice. So if there's anybody that's watching this, this is new to writing, um, what would be that kind of one piece of advice that you'd give to them? Um, can I give two? <laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of cheating, but go on. Um, read more scripts like just like your favourite film find the script most of them are like free online and read the script once you've watched the film or uh, read the script and then watch the film uh, because it just makes you a better writer and also don't be afraid to get feedback like sending your scripts to other readers um, there was um a person that I just paid to like a sort of side hustle that he does where he read my script and literally give me good and bad points on every page. And at first it's like kind of horrible because it's like you're showing your baby to someone and then it, someone could like tear it apart. But <laughs> my God, my sort of second like draft of my, um, one of my scripts is just so much better because this person just like gave me great feedback. So yeah. So read more scripts and don't be afraid to show your scripts to people to get um, feedback. Any other kind of pearls of wisdom? I think that the sharing your work is really important between writers. I think when you're younger, you kind of tend to think that oh, I can't share anything because people are going to steal my ideas. Um, and I think as you get older, you just kind of think, well, no, people want to make their own ideas, write their own ideas. And, and also, if you trust that person, then they're just going to be, hopefully, as helpful as that reader was for David. Um, but has anybody else got any kind of thoughts on what advice you'd give to, to new writers? Uh, I totally agree with what David said, so I will not repeat it. Uh, <laughs> I think, I think uh, what uh, also is very important is learn the rules, as you would do with anything. So learn the mechanics of a script, learn what makes a good script learn the structure, uh, uh, learn what makes good dialogue, good character development. And then once you master this, then you write as much as possible so it comes out more naturally to you. So it's not like you're following a recipe or you're joining the dots, but you know uh, what your story is about, you know your characters, you know your pace, all these things. I think for me um, would be just set yourself um, a target and that's, it's normally like a daily target like if you can just write one page a day or say dedicate 20 minutes a day of just writing because writing is difficult and it's hard and, and you've got to just keep kind of pushing through because all the good stuff will come afterwards but it's you just got to get it down 
on a page first and then you can rewrite it or you know uh, make it better and everything else but you just gotta you gotta sit down and write and I think that's sometimes the most difficult thing like finding 20 minutes a day after a hard day of work is really difficult but it's it's like like they say it's like a muscle it's like a memory you know you sit down and just write every day is is the best way of becoming a good writer I reckon. Yeah, I would just add to what you just said because I think, yeah, it's making time tight because it's it's not a quick um, process. It takes a long time. So just be willing to be patient and grind basically because a lot of it is going to be just you in them by yourself with your thoughts. And some people that will drive them crazy, but <laughs> the writers, you just have to embrace. So yeah, just being able to be in that moment and just give yourself the time to work on a craft basically. Yeah, I would echo what everyone else has said, make time to write, um, read other people's scripts. I mean, I, I used to think it was a bit of a hassle when someone would say, can you read my script? But now I see it as it's doing you as much of a favor as it is to them. And I've learned so much from doing that. Um, also, yeah, like everyone else is saying, um, accept feedback and be willing to have feedback. I think it was um, randomly Jason Bateman that said some feedback makes your script better and some makes it different. And then you just have to be confident in the story you have um, to yeah accept what you want and leave what you want. And also, I mean, uh, you can bleep this if not, but also fuck it, like just write what 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 you want and um and just go for it writing's subjective so um yeah it, not everyone will love it but it, as long as you do then that's all that matters and there will be an audience out there so just just write that that would be my advice awesome okay well i'm gonna finish it there i think it's a good point to finish on just write so um get out there writing is hard work but you've got to put the hard work in and then you get to have the fun with it um, I think that's kind of summed up the conversation sort of. Um, so thank you very much for coming. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, if anybody's got kind of links to films and stuff, I'm going to put those down in the description. So if anybody's watching this and you want to find out more about these wonderful writers, um, then you'll have the opportunity to do that. Um, but yeah, I just want to say a big thank you um, for all you wonderful writers and just keep up the, the hard work. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, then give it a like, leave a comment below and share it with other people who you think might also find it helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and turn on the notifications so you'll be notified for my upcoming videos.